This is the new BMW 3 Series Touring and it could well be the only car you ever need. Well, unless you need a pure EV, an off-roader, a convertible or a two-seater sports car. Yes, it's a bit of a lazy motoring journalist cliche. Anyway, on with the review. Let's start this video by talking about the price. So the 3 Series Touring starts from £34,000, though you can save an average of just under £7,000 off one through CarWow. Now, if you want to see how much money you can save on one of these, or any new car for that matter, click on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWow. It's your go-to car comparison website. You can look at car reviews, compare offers on cars, and delivery times. Let's talk about the design, starting at the front. So you probably noticed of late that BMW's grills have been getting moosive. <laughs> Thankfully, the 3 Series is a bit more normal in size, but the look of it and the texture of it does change depending on which model you go for. So with this M340i, you have this kind of weird web effect and this fake bit here, which is just odd, but it's okay from a distance, actually. In fact, the M340i has unique bumpers, which are more sporty. The lesser models have different bumpers as well. So the SE has its own bumper, the Sport does, so does the M Sport. And it is quite a good looking car from the front. From the side, the 3 Series Touring is quite a smart looking estate car, the way the roofline does arch downwards. Then you have the classic BMW Hofmeister kink, apparently, which means that this goes in the opposite, I don't know, it's design waffle. Hofmeister kink is supposed to look like this. This doesn't look so much like it, but it's kind of cool anyway. What do I know about car design? I know whether I like the look of a car or not, and I do like the look of this one. There's bold creases here, and this one being the M340i, yet again has some styling upgrades like side skirts, and it's got unique 19-inch alloy wheels. Then there's this, though. This is the bit I don't like. Huge cutout in the doors for the handle. It's kind of like my eyes after a heavy drinking session. Oh. Hangover eyes, that's what that's like. The most prominent feature at the back of the car are the tail lights. So they're sculptured and they start around the side of the car and extend to the back like this. They're quite large actually. Then there's the bumpers, which the design changes yet again, like the front bumpers, depending on which model you go for. So these are the sportiest looking bumpers with some sort of diffuser effect there. Now, no BMW 3 Series Touring has fake exhaust pipes, but what this M340i does have is an over-exaggeration of its exhaust pipes because the real one's in there and it's much smaller. There are a lot of engine choices available with this car, so I've had to note them down on my phone because there's eight of them. Let's start with the diesels. There's a 318D, a 320D, and a 330D. Moving on to the petrols, there's a 320i, a 330i, and this M340i. Then there's one hybrid, the 330e. BMW says this M340i should be able to do 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds, which sounds really quick. But I guess it does have 374 horsepower. What is the reality though? So I have my specialist timing gear here and I launch it and see what time I can get. Go in the sporty settings, traction in sport mode. Let's do it. Launch control, activate, go. Oh, grip's good. And that's that. So it's quicker than BMW says. Surprise, surprise. Not 60 in 4.1 seconds. It really is quite impressive, isn't it? Here on the inside, the 3 Series Touring has quite a conservative design. However, this one is a little bit more leery because of the colour scheme we've got. Kind of reminds me of the centrefold of a 1980s Borno mag. Now, if you'd like to see a car with the same setup as this, I actually had a BMW M850i with the same interior. And do you know what? If you want to watch that video, click up there to see me go on a big, long road trip in that car and get up to all sorts of mischief. But one thing that is interesting sitting in this is how it feels very similar to BMW's top of the range car. There's not much difference in terms of quality in this three series touring compared to that eight series. Like all this material here is all super soft. This one does have the extended leather and the quality of the interior does depend on your options and also which trim level you go for as well. But generally it is all very good. Only when you reach down here do things get a little bit more cheap feeling, but there is a soft surface even down here on the door bins. You do not get that even in Audis. This I think has the best made interior in its class and it's solid as you like. Look at that, so solid. Look, <laughs> really is solid. Nice interior and very, very sensibly laid out. All your driving stuff there, all your climate stuff there, your radio stuff there, and your infotainment system there. Simple and simple to get comfy as well. So lots of adjustment in the steering wheel, loads. I mean, look at that. And in the seat. That was 
weird. What's also weird is the fact I've just realised I'm totally matching the car's interior. Who would do that? Getting into the back is easy because the door's open nice and wide and there's not too much intrusion from the wheel arch, so yeah, easy to get in. And then you find, oh look, headroom. Even though I've got the panoramic roof on this and it does eat into headspace, still fine. Knee room, that's fine as well. How about for three people? There is this huge hump in the floor to get your legs over, but once you've done that, it's all right. You do sit a bit higher on this centre seat, but you could just about carry three adults in the back if you absolutely needed to. Hmm, it's all good. My favourite bit is this, look, with other cars, the seats would end there, but in BMW you get this extra bit for some lovely under thigh support. Now let's talk about the boot because that's why you're going to have a touring over the normal 3 Series saloon, isn't it? So you have 500 litres of space and look at this. We have packed all this stuff underneath the low cover. Look at all of that! It's amazing! And you have these metal scuff plates here so it's easy to slide things out without damaging your paintwork. There's lots of hooks like that. You've got 12 volt socket there. Underneath all this stuff, there's some other tie down points. I'd like to show you the fact that you can fit the low cover underneath there, but all Jack's kit is in the way. Jack, we need to take the kit out of here. Uh, it's not worth it, man. Well, I'll tell you what, Jack, you're gonna have to take the car away, empty it all out yourself and shoot it in your own time. Bad Jack. Anyway, boot's big, so 500 litres of space, which is a bit more than a Mercedes C-Class estate, but a bit less than a Volvo V60 estate. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my full in-depth video review of that car. Now then, it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car. If you have an Android phone, you can unlock the car using your phone, but you can't if you've got an Apple phone because of reasons. However, inside the car, you can connect your Apple phone to the car system because it's got Apple CarPlay, but it doesn't have Android Auto. Not yet, anyway, we'll have it eventually. But right now, I'm going to stay annoyed. Lumbar support isn't standard on any model, not even this 50 grand car. No, you have to pay £265 extra for it. The pattern on the centre console is a bit odd. It's a little bit like one of those magic eye diagrams. So if you stare at it long enough, you can see a dolphin or something like that. Also, when you're driving along, your peripheral vision just picks it up and it's really distracting. It's quite handy, the low cover just flips up like that so you can get easy access to stuff underneath. Trouble is, you then go and shut the boot and go get in your car. And then when you go to look out the back window in the rear view mirror, you realise that that's left up there. So you have to get back out again and come back and bloody well sort it out. And, oh, God. I wish this was electric, then it wouldn't do that. Right now. The seat base extender is good for under thigh support, but this trough captures any crumbs. It's pretty grim actually. Yeah. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. Being a BMW, you can turn the stability control all the way off. And even in the four wheel drive versions, you can still do skids because they're rear drive biased. Look at this. Classic BMW, it's so classic, it's so classic, it's so very, very classic. Oh yeah! Can't be asked to open the entire boot. Don't worry, you can just open the glass section. Look at that. And now I can get in. Yeah, easy peasy. Doesn't shut. There we go. The windscreen pillars are filled with foam to help reduce the noise from wind whistle as you're bombing down the motorway or autobahn. Light for light, the new 3 Series Touring is up to 50 kilograms lighter than the old one. The centre of gravity is one centimetre lower. Also, the body is up to 50% stiffer in places, yet it still retains that classic BMW 50-50 weight distribution. The M340i gets an upgraded sports exhaust, which sounds... <coughs> lovely. Also, unlike cars from the likes of Audi, you don't have a soft limiter, so you can rev it all the way up. The normal 3 Series Touring is rear wheel drive. However, you can get X-Drive four wheel drive versions that so they do have a rear drive bias for a more sporty feeling. You can get lower end cars with a manual gearbox, though most models are available with an automatic eight speed gearbox. There's three different types of normal suspension setup in this car. There's the standard one, 
then there's a stiffer, sportier version in the N-Sport models, and then there's an even stiffer, even sportier version in this M340i. And above that, you can get an adaptive system called the M Adaptive Sport Suspension. And what that does is allow you to choose between stiffer sport or softer comfort modes, or you can press a button called adaptive, and the whole car will then just figure out what you're doing and how you're driving and what kind of road you're driving on and alter the suspension accordingly. There's three different braking systems available on this car. So there's the standard setup, there's a high performance version on the M Sport models, and then there's an even higher performance version on this M340i for even more stopping power. The M340i also comes as standard with an electrically operated rear differential for better corner exiting traction. You can get that as an upgrade on the 330i and the 330d. You can also get the car with something called variable sport steering, and I could go into a lot of detail of how it works, but it basically makes it more variable and more sporty. Let's see what this 3 Series Touring is like to drive. And rather unsurprisingly, it's quite like the 3 Series Saloon, which is great to drive. So around town, it's comfy over bumps. It's especially comfy if you have the adaptive suspension, because then you can put it into the comfort mode. But even if you don't, it's still very, very good. Visibility is all right. The only problem is this pillar is pretty big. But as you get the parking camera standard and all-round parking sensors, it's easy enough to park, so you don't need to worry about that too much. The steering is light enough for manoeuvring around town. The brakes are sharp but not grabby, so you're not jerking yourself to a standstill. That sounds really rude if you're American. British people won't mind. One thing I will say, though, is that if you're getting a 3 Series Touring, definitely get the automatic gearbox. A manual is not becoming of a car of this standard. And anyway, the manuals in BMWs aren't that great, I don't think. So get the automatic, it's worth the extra cash. The gearbox is also impressive. If you need to suddenly overtake someone, so I'm doing 50, floor it, kicks down really quickly, and it's just on it. And this engine is very punchy. And it sounds good as well, this exhaust. Doing that too often won't do wonders for your fuel economy though. It's part of the reason why this car's only averaging a bit over 20 miles per gallon which isn't great. With more sedate driving, you might be able to eke into the 30s, but only if you're really careful. That's the price you pay for six cylinders. There's no price to pay for comfort on the motorway, though. The seats, they're relaxing. The car's generally quiet. The only thing I do notice is a bit of noise from the tyres. I think it might be something to do with the fact that BMWs are fitted with run flat tyres. They just seem to make a bit more noise than standard tyres. Other than that, very quiet. Can't hear any wind noise at all. One of the great things about BMWs is that they're great for in town, for commuting, and when you come to a twisty road. So I'm gonna put the car into sports mode now, which will sharpen everything up, the steering, the throttle response, the suspension, and here we go. And now it turns into a fun to drive car. Ooh, yes, the four wheel drive system doing its job there, helping pull my nose out of the turn. Wow, it's lively. It's lively. You gotta love BMWs for that. Frick, that was air. Not good. Why did I put the indicator on? I had to change gear. Oh, the ESP saving me there a bit. That's what BMW is about. Pure driving pleasure. And this can give you that if you want it, as well as hauling your family and your luggage all around in otherwise tranquility. But as you can see, you can break that in an instant with a moment of madness. Let's move on to technology and the car's infotainment system, which is generally very, very good. So the screen's responsive and you can operate it by touch. You can use a swivel wheel down here, this touchpad here. Simple, easy to navigate, very, very nice. The digital driver's display, however, is not quite so good. Don't like that so much. Reason being, it's all just dark and miserable, and I don't like the way the dials go backwards to the rev counter. I can see what they're doing. Frees up a bit more space in the middle, and you can then see the sat-nav and stuff in there, but it's just so dark and dingy. I much prefer the infotainment systems you now get a Mercedes car. In fact, I'm going to be getting a new Mercedes car myself, and if you want to see what it is and check out its infotainment system, click on the pop-out banner up there. It'll take you to the review of that car. Ooh, what is it? What is it? You can get the car with something called reversing assistant. So it remembers your steering inputs from the last 50 meters and can play them in reverse to make it easier for you to reverse out of tight parking spaces and underground car parks and all that stuff. See, it's doing the wheel itself. Andy, where are we going? What the heck, what the heck? What's it doing? It's taking me down this steep slope. 
what's going on? This is madness! Actually, this is the way I came up. I knew it would happen. Connectivity in this car is pretty good. So you have a USB port there. You have a 12 volt socket there for your dash cam. Under here, there's a USB-C for the kids. And then in the back, there's two more USB-Cs for the kids. And a 12 volt for your gran. There's also something called the technology pack, which includes a data SIM card. So you've got internet connectivity in the car. You can use it as a Wi-Fi hotspot. And it also includes wireless charging for your mobile phone. Perfect. There's a heads-up display which shows lots and lots of different information, though at the moment I've got it set so it's not showing much at all. Sorry about that, it's a bit pointless really. You can get the car with voice commands and the system's pretty good at recognising what you're saying. You can just ask it to take you direct to certain locations without having to programme the satellite navigation, which is good. You can even ask it existential questions, so check this out. Hey BMW, what is the meaning of life? Driving pleasure. Brilliant. Okay, let's talk about equipment. So the range kicks off with the SE, and with that you get all-round parking sensors and a reversing camera, cruise control, three-zone climate control, rain-sensing wipers, and LED headlights. Move up to the Sport model, and you get a larger fuel tank that now has 59 litres. You also get heated front leather sport seats and aluminium kit plates. Moving up to the M Sport gives you an extra inch to your infotainment system. So it goes from nine inch to this all singing, all dancing 10 inch system. You then also get a 12 inch digital screen behind the steering wheel instead of old fashioned dials. Then there's the M Sport Plus, which adds some seat belts with M Sport stitching. Then move up to this M340i and you get an upgraded stereo. Now we'd like to see how much of a saving you can make on this M340i. So I've put the details into the car wire configurator and I've got an offer back for 40,500 pounds. So saving of nine and a half grand. Now, if you want to know what I think is the best engine and trim combination of the BMW 3 Series Touring, and it's not this one, by the way, click on the pop-out banner up there, because what I've gone and done is configured my favorite version of this car, and got some great offers back from our trusted dealers. So go check it out. Being an estate car, there's lots of practicality goodness, so get this on all three series. But look what you also get. You can fold down the middle seat like that for through loading with two passengers either side and when you fold the seats down, look, way they do lie pretty much flat. Well, kind of flat. <laughs> I'm being kind. It's good enough though. And then check this out, look, you can get nettage and stuff like that to keep your slobbery dog in the back there without it dribbling all over your leather seats. And I like this feature as well. The rear windows, they go all the way down. Maybe I just like that because I was a kid that grew up in the 80s when there was no air conditioning in cars, so you always stuck your head out <gasps> to get some air. Cubby spaces in this car are pretty good. The glove box is reasonable. There's some storage area under here, which once again is reasonable. There's some more under here, which is less reasonable. The cup holders are actually a good size, so they can hold both big and small cups without too much trouble. And they have little grippy hands there like that to keep your stuff from rolling and wriggling around. Then the door bins are a big size and you've got an extra section in them there. There's a little storage area there, which is felt lined so things don't rattle around in it. In the back, you have decent sized door bins yet again with extra space behind and some netting on the seat backs. Because the doors open nice and wide and there's plenty of space in the back seats, it's quite easy to fit a child seat, even the bulky rear facing ones without having to move the front passenger seat forward. Also like this, the Isofix points are nice and easy to get to and they're under flip up covers and like the ones on cars where they have to remove them and you end up losing the covers. Look at that, dead easy. It's going to be simple to mount it. But that's probably how you ended up with the baby in the first place. So then, what's my final verdict on the BMW 3 Series Touring? Should you uh, avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should just go right ahead and buy the 3 Series Touring. It's the best car at what it does. And it does a lot. Do you agree with my verdict? Let me know in the comments section. Also, please subscribe to this channel for more videos. And if you click on the deals box to the right, you can see how much you can save on a new car at CarWow. Or click on the video windows below to watch another of my videos.